Hey, we've got uh, quite a few folks joining us. Great. So um, just before we get started, we've got about three minutes. I'm doing um, attendance, and actually before I forget, I need to share my screen. And um, if you can, can you see like a PowerPoint slide? Can you just do a thumbs up if you can see that? Yeah, do you see it? Okay, excellent, thanks, perfect. So I'm just doing, we're, um, this is actually just for the purposes of our own internal tracking. It's not like you have to. Um, and the other thing I would ask, I think most of you right now, I'm seeing mostly a first and last names and some of you like, I know Schaefer is Phyllis Schaefer, but if, if yours isn't showing a name or um, if possibly don't know your name, could you possibly just go to, um, in your, panel, which is like the control center. If you go to chat, maybe you could just type in your name and then that way I could um, know who is who is joining us and just, again, have that for our attendance purposes, if you, if you don't mind doing that. So, um, so I'll get started and let's just see here. I'm going to look at the chat room. And if you also, if you have questions going on, then excellent. Very cool. People are typing their names in. That's great. Um, it, at any time in the workshop, if you want to unmute yourself, it's very easy. It's like a walkie-talkie. So go to your space bar and hold to talk, and that will allow you to um, have a conversation, talk, etc. And we will certainly take some um, breaks in the middle um, during different sections here. We'll kind of stop and pause at each section, and then if you have questions, I can um, work through just some of those issues with you. Um, I wanted to mention one announcement um, hot off the press. I just got this from Treva, and she said that anyone in the workshop tonight, if you might want a webcam, uh, and these are 720p, so they're not high definition, high definition 1080p, th those are available. Of course, that would probably involve um, getting to campus, and I know a lot of people are um, sheltering in place and quarantining and all that kind of stuff. But um, if, if you like that, or maybe you don't know right now, wait till the end of this workshop and then you could um, make a decision. Most of us have built in either through our cell phones, we have built in cameras, video cameras. I'm recording right now on my Mac desktop. I'll talk a little bit later about some other cameras potentially you could use. But, um, you know, again, for the most part, what we have technology wise available, with some exceptions, through our computers, our laptops, maybe our Chromebooks and our phones is actually fairly um, decent quality. And we'll talk in this um, frame of uh, coronavirus about flexibility and just being um, open to change and to disruptions. We're all going through that right now. Um, as we're on the air now, Nevada just announced it's shutting down everything statewide except for, say, hospitals, um, grocery stores and gas stations. So a lot of change coming and I just think we should communicate to our students and uh, the folks we work with that um, things will not be perfect but we'll get through it. So I wanted to mention, I just sent this out through all um, campus email and it is just uh, giving you a sense of, of what the training curriculum, if you will, looks like currently. This uh, will change over time but if you take the Canvas, the basics, which I'm offering um, in a lot of uh, time slots coming up, and please check your emails. Saturday and Sunday, I'll do some additional trainings because I know a lot of people will be at home. So um, once you do the Canvas basics training, if you want to get more insights about how to do modules, announcements, and assignments, also um, discussions, we'll have those trainings coming up. And then the video of the basics right now, we'll get into every video use possible, including Zoom. If you really want to focus on Zoom and do what's called synchronous video, then I recommend the Zoom workshop. And that is going to be offered um, at the 8 o'clock hour after this and also tomorrow morning at 10. In addition, we'll have one-on-one -on -one assistance with me and Treva and some other folks on campus. Austin and Al are working really hard uh, trying to secure Chromebooks for students talking about technology, looking at our firewall and some potential limitations. I'm really crossing my fingers if um, Amazon servers go down, everything nationwide goes down because they're pretty much handling everything. And then I also will be offering some teaching talks in the future um, as check-ins and quasi-therapy sessions where we can uh, have some conversations about how we're doing and what frustrations are out there. I just want to highlight again tomorrow there is an all-campus uh, Zoom session. Lisa Schaefer will be sending out that information happening from 3 to 4.30. So check your email, and if you want to participate, you already know how to log into Zoom. So uh, take part in that, and um, certainly you can um, be a part of the uh, conversation. Let me just see if anyone else has has joined us here. Um, Michael, I'm, I'm just going to do a couple of... Um, 
screenshots. Again, we're just trying to track who is who is here, and then we can reach out to you in the future if we need to uh, have some additional conversations. I also encourage you if you if questions come up today, um, speak to me offline, and, and we can certainly work through some of these issues. So let's get right into it. What I'll be covering today is uh, a conversation about the various uses of video available. And let me just try to, um, okay, I think that's better. It was just, my screen was blocked, you can't see it, but I had the video panel there. So the different types of video we might be using. And um, of course, if you're interested in synchronous video, your best bet is Zoom. So synchronous means that you're doing stuff in real time and an opportunity for face-to-face -face faculty next quarter in spring is if you want to just meet your classes as you would in a traditional physical face-to-face -face classroom but do it over video, you could actually then have that time available because that time is already built into our students schedules. There was some conversation about having our students really message to them that we should keep, they should keep their schedules open. I know work situations will change but it'd be a good opportunity maybe for students to have that time open. It's totally up to you as a faculty member. I just saw some um, posts on social media about faculty talking about doing real-time art demonstrations and painting and so forth. So there's actually going to be, I think, some interesting levels of um, innovation that maybe some of us hadn't anticipated because there is sometimes a negative opinion about distance education. I try to take the, the approach that we should be positive about what we can do. Now, that being said, if you're teaching a pottery class or if you're teaching a chemistry class and you can't do something face-to-face -face in that laboratory setting with all your equipment and the hands-on tactile kind of stuff, can you still teach that class? Any concerns about that, definitely reach out to department chairs or deans today or tomorrow. Do that as soon as you can because I know decisions are being made as we speak about which classes can transition to DE for spring and which maybe unfortunately would have to be canceled. should also say if some classes are canceled, we could see an enrollment spike in other classes and I can't even guess what classes those might be. Some students might need GE credit. Some students might need a class for graduation. Some students might just need elective credit. So I think our enrollments will be pretty robust. And the one concern about that, I got a text message from um, Christine Tomlio today who's did her first Zoom session with 20 students in a psychology class for our last week of class. And she um, said it was not easy. And so one thing I want to throw out there is keep in mind there are going to be challenges our students will have challenges, we will have challenges, including technology, psychological challenges, thinking about stress, thinking about what happens if we or our loved ones or our students or family members come down with the virus. And so all that taking into account, I would say, don't try to do too much. If you've participated in my Canvas training, I said very clearly that doing too much is, is not a good idea because we're under these emergency circumstances and just processing psychologically and existentially what's happening to us will obviously have a toll on us. Indeed, it will have a toll on our students as well. So when I introduce these technologies, think about what makes sense for your class organically. What are you trying to accomplish? And then at the end, we'll have some questions and offline we can also have conversations about um, how you might direct yourself to some of these uh, possibilities. And just to say, in terms of using video, I'm a pretty high-end uh, video user. I'll show you my YouTube channel. I have, I think, over 1,500 videos there. So video is something that I work with, I don't want to say every day of the week, but between some of my musical stuff I do and my teaching stuff and other um, field work videos, I, I'm constantly uploading media and using media. So for me, it's very comfortable, and I hope to pass on some of that um, comfort to you as much as possible. Okay, so going back to the technology, Zoom is for synchronous meeting and teaching videos. And uh, 8 o'clock tonight, we'll have a workshop on Zoom. Recording and uploading media, I'll talk to you about um, the Canvas tools, including the um, rich uh, content editor. This will be for asynchronous videos and also video uploads, no screen captures. Canvas Studio is a great tool. It's probably the easiest one to use. It's way easier than Zoom. Canvas Studio is something that we received for a very small price through our uh, current technology grant. And I actually think we have a very good chance right now to keep that tool with us because of what's going on here um, adapting to coronavirus. So um, we'll have to see how that goes, but I think it's really going to be effective because you can do screen captures like you can in Zoom, 
but it can be something that you can quickly create as I'll walk you through today and then put that right into your shell and the students can use it. We will also talk about cell phone video, which is not necessarily the best, but it's pretty good. And so there's an option there for you to create, say, an uh, introduction video on your cell phone, very easily upload that to your computer, and then upload that into a couple of the different places in Canvas. And then there are personal apps, and I'm not gonna get into those too much, but if you open your phone right now, of course, you could do FaceTime. You could do um, all sorts of apps. The Spanish department uses Marco Polo. You can obviously um, go live on YouTube. So a lot of those apps that are video, I think we're going to use probably as we communicate with our family, as we are really trying to um, you know, communicate with them in these challenging times. So I won't cover those too much. And then added to this list will also be archival YouTube and um, other sources. So I think a big question for us to um, answer today is, do you intend to do synchronous or asynchronous video in your classes? And really, you could do both, but again, the concern I would have is to not do too much, just to keep things manageable. So again, synchronous video would be for a situation where you want to have a conversation like we're having right now, it makes the most sense, we're all communicating, there's Q&A. And that could be useful, certainly for our governance council meetings at the college, and of course, for our classes. For those of you teaching quite a few art faculty on right now, photography faculty, I'll take you through a short demo of how you could actually demo software on a screen. It could be very useful for you to certainly have the um, sharing capability that I'm using right now in uh, Zoom. Because in real time, you could take students through web pages. You can take them through anything that you can see right now on my screen. You could take them through any software program you have, websites, play videos, show images. So. It's about as ideal as I can imagine if you really want to work on um, a class and um, process things in, in real time. So Lange earlier was saying she was interested in doing this with her um, film production class, and it'd be a great opportunity to bring up that software and have the students all work at the same time. Or for our art faculty, do a project at home. And a little bit later, I'll talk about um, tables and setups where you can use your camera in a way, and maybe I'll put my light on here. I don't know if the light, I don't have my current video, but um, you, you do do pro probably want to think about your environment and it doesn't have to be, um, you know, for photography teachers online, obviously a perfect studio setup in terms of, you know, shooting video, but good enough that your students can see what you're working with if you're doing um, demos. Um, I'm looking at questions. Leslie Amato just asked, how many can be online for synchronous at a time? So um, in my Zoom workshop, I'll mention to you and it's probably good to look at this now. If you have a basic account, um, you are limited to, I believe it's 30 participants, it's not a lot, and 45 minutes. So I really recommend if you're hosting your own meetings for governance purposes, or if you are teaching a class, don't even uh, mess around with it. Um, get on Zoom with this account, and let me just cut and paste this, and I'll put this into the chat so everyone can see it. So you could just click on that. It's a very simple web form. This is counterintuitive. If you already have a Zoom account that's basic and the way to see that is to go to your account tab on uh, Zoom and see if it says pro or basic. If it says basic, go to this link and even though you already have an account, sign up as if you don't have an account. It took me a couple hours to figure this out and Austin was, was wonderful in helping me work through this. So once you sign up, you'll get a confirmation and it'll say, confirm that you are switching from basic to pro account. The minute you switch to a pro account, you will have, and I say between, anywhere between 100 and 300 users that can be online at the same time. And I say between because there's some confusion about a business versus a pro account. Pro account starts at 100, um, business account is 300. And both of those accounts, the pro and the business, have unlimited Zoom workshop times. So you could be on 24 hours a day if you want to do, you could do a whole um, workshop for 24 hours with your students. So to answer um, Leslie's question, you um, will be limited if you only have that basic account. So I definitely recommend for teaching purposes, going on to Zoom, CCC Confer, filling out this form. Within an hour, typically, they'll tell you 72 hours, but it should be about an hour, and then you'll get that confirmation. Um, of course, Leslie, of course. Um, you'll get that confirmation back, and then you can um, have that pro account. So synchronous is really your place to go is, is Zoom, and that's your one-stop shop. 
And as I've said, and I'll, I'll take you through like the idea of a demo a little bit later. Two uses for Zoom could be conversation. So like we're having today, I think it could actually be very stimulating if you had, you know, 20, 30 students at a time. Definitely sit through my Zoom workshop either the 8 o'clock hour tonight or, or 10 a.m. tomorrow because just hearing from Christina and others out there, it's not easy. And I was running a workshop last night with 23. We currently have 21. And uh, I, I was getting confused. I was trying to follow chat for the first 15 minutes. I forgot to screen share. So now that I've used it here, I'm doing about four of these a day, last couple of days, I'm getting better and better. And it's another opportunity for you to grow and learn over time and communicate to your students that certainly there will be hiccups and we'll work through those hiccups. But if you um, do plan to use Zoom, think about some of those challenges running a class. It definitely could be a hurdle just getting through the initial class with technology and muting and all that kind of stuff. And in the 8 o'clock hour, I will go through all those dynamics of what you might expect. Now, um, I can just show you a little bit on, on Zoom. So the one thing, let me just pull up here. My other, I'm just going to pull this up to refer to just a couple of things from my Zoom training. I just want to show you at the end some of the features and that way you'll get a sense of what exactly you're um, maybe going to be getting into. Again, come to the 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock tomorrow for all the ins and outs of Zoom. But one of the cool things about Zoom is you all have right now a version of this panel. Um, I actually can't, there's a setting in Zoom where I could show you all my hidden features, but when you are on as an instructor or a governor's council leader and you're running a Zoom workshop, a lot of things are hidden. The chat is hidden. Um, you know, like you can't right now, I'm, I'm waving the chat room over this PowerPoint, you can't see that. And so it's kind of nice because there's privacy. So if you are teaching a counseling class and there's something private and a student wants to perhaps, um, oh yes, absolutely, um, email link. So let me do that right now so I don't forget. Um, I'm about as uh, overloaded with documents as imaginable, but that's that's a good idea. So let me send you that list. I think it's down here somewhere. Um, for tomorrow, where are we? Tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put this right now. So these will have all the links to um, the trainings, and you can just click on any of those. So that's for uh, the 8 o'clock tonight and then also the uh, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So what I'm suggesting to you is like if you're teaching a counseling class and there are some private conversations, um, of course, you're welcome. You can actually go into the chat and you can um, take it off of everyone and just chat to an individual student. Or likewise, a student could send you a private message. So privacy is a nice feature there. But this is what you'll see. So you will have a window. You can mute people. I will recommend to you in my next training at 8 to definitely set up some settings ahead of time so that you don't have to do this on the fly. If you have 30 people in the class and everyone is unmuted at the beginning, you'll hear baby sounds, you'll hear dogs barking, you'll hear all that kind of stuff and feedback loops. So definitely think about ways of making your life easier with the technology. I won't go through this all, but you know, there's chat features, there's video options, and so forth. And then one other feature I want to mention if you're using Zoom, this is for folks out there who want to do a real-time demonstration. So I'm teaching photography and maybe I have a classic photo, I pull that up on the screen. And then I use my annotate tools. First I share it and I can share the desktop in Zoom, I can share a whiteboard, I can share individual windows of any program you have currently open on your desktop. And then I could go to my uh, annotate tool and that will pull down a range of typical things you'd see like in PowerPoint or Word. Pencils and pens and different color shapes and little emoji things and erasers and highlighting tools. And that's very nice because then you can visually analyze it. We have at least three or four art um, photography instructors on right now. You could visually analyze something and then you could draw and then you could say, hey, students, you, you have the ability to annotate as well. Why, why don't you draw what you think is the um, you know part of this image that creates perspective in terms of the viewer experience. And so that's kind of cool uh, if you want to consider that. So I'll, I'll stop there with um, saying any more about Zoom. And, and again, you can go um, into the next workshop at 8 today or um, tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. So I thought next we'll jump away from Zoom. So again, Zoom is really your go-to place to possibly do the synchronous 
everyone having a conversation, doing a demo. And the purpose is, I was thinking about this today as some of the art instructors are saying, you know, I want to do a demo in front of my class. I would say if you really want the students to participate you with, with you in real time and you want to actually um, have, oh, there was a question, is the 8 o'clock training paid as well? So the, the only um, payment we're making right now is if you're um, full or part-time faculty, you're teaching for us in spring in a traditional face-to-face -face class, in a classroom that's being moved to DE, there will be a, a $50 stipend provided upon publishing of, of your Canvas shell, just to answer that. But to go back to the art demo, if you are um, really wanting students to work with you in real time, I think you definitely have to use Zoom, and, and that's kind of the end of the conversation. Now, if you're setting something up, a tutorial, and you're saying, okay, I'm going to show you um, and I heard the other day someone used, the art people will laugh, someone used in a meeting Bob Ross as an example. Kind of funny, right? And I don't know if it's the best example, but Bob Ross, right, beyond his hair. You, you like that, Phyllis? <laughs> we all love Bob Ross. Um, you know, yeah. And um, But, you know, the whole point of, of that whole video series that he did back in the day um, was that people could, you know, look and appreciate and not necessarily work on it in real time. So if you're doing a tutorial for the purpose of simply showing, then what I'm focusing on now with some of the Canvas tools um, might be your best bet. So make that decision and think about pivoting after this moment because really you want to start setting that up and stick with whatever video plan is, is going to work. So let's then look at what's called the uh, recorded media slash upload on Canvas. And this is not necessarily, um, it, it doesn't have a, a great name to it. So I'm going to show you in my Canvas shell, but from, uh, this was me, I, I, we had a meeting over the weekend, a lot of us, and we were in baseball caps and our pajamas and stuff. So we were all looking kind of, kind of bad because uh, we, we were trying to make some plans here. I really want to recommend to you that if you're using this, and we might almost say this globally, use Google Chrome. Uh, Michael Laughlin, who I think is, is on board right now, we were at a workshop on Friday and we could not figure it out. And finally, Trevor did. He was trying to access his Canvas shell. He couldn't edit it at all because he was using Internet Explorer. Safari on Mac will work, but this particular thing will only work for me on a Mac that I'm going to show you on Google Chrome. So this is what's called um, the rich content editor, and I'm specifically focusing on video. So if you haven't had the Canvas shell training, some of this may not look familiar to you. Don't worry about that. I'll just show you the video side of this. So we can access, access this from any page, um, including our syllabus. I'll just create a new page here on my shell. And I'm going to just title that something just for the purposes of what we're doing. So I've mentioned in my Canvas training that on the top you see the traditional icons that you note in Microsoft Word, so very familiar to us um, graphically. So that's kind of nice, that familiarity. On the bottom row, with some exceptions, and these guys should probably actually get stuck up here because they're more text features, but these all along here, with the exception of, say, the equation, these all relate to forms of media. So starting here, you have a table, which I guess you could say is media. You have insert or edit media. You have insert hyperlink, remove hyperlink. You have image, that's the equation editor. Um, you have commons favorites, won't get into that. You have YouTube. Um, I just sent a message to Trevor. Currently, the YouTube um, insert search editor is not doing the thing, and I think it might be a glitch. So I'm gonna try to send a ticket to Canvas. Uh, there is a way around that that's actually super easy. So I'm just going to hit OK on that. Um, and then this is the one that is maybe your friend in terms of creating some asynchronous uh, video. So I will just click on record or upload media. And this pops up right now and you should be seeing my web camera. You're getting a delay here. Um, tonight I'm actually recording the audio part of this on my audio recorder. I have found that there's a little tinny sound i think the audio compression that is used for zoom is is not ideal so what i'm actually doing is recording it with another audio recorder so this is what you're seeing in real time what i could do then is hit start recording and i'm and i guess we can let's just try this i hopefully will not create a feedback loop um okay so we're doing a test here we're testing this and i will now hit finish then i can give it a title um whatever i want to call it hit save Okay, and it should 
populate it, save it here. Um, okay, there wasn't too much of a delay. So then this will then create right there in that part of Canvas, and I could do this in most places in Canvas where I have access to this content editor. I could then save that, and then all of a sudden I have a page that has, and I'll play it, um, it's being converted. It, that was a really short video. It, it could take a couple of minutes, but certainly by the time you record it and then um, uh, use it in your class, it, it will be available. So that is that is certainly one option right there that's really easy for you. And as you can see, I accomplished all that in a matter of a couple of clicks. If you're wondering what's going on here, this is a microphone setting. So if I had my um, high quality zoom microphone set up here, which doubles as a weapon of, of sorts, it's pretty pretty sturdy uh, microphone. I use this for all my YouTube content if I'm doing voiceovers because I want really good um, quality. And those of you like Solange who do audio recording, you know, things like microphone capsules and high-end microphones, you could literally spend um, $10,000 on a really good microphone um, if you're obviously a media personality or something like that. But for our purposes, I really want to say that the audio that we encounter on our um, cameras and our microphones on our computers, on our cell phones, are really good enough. We don't have to be audiophiles for the purposes of getting something online for our students. So you don't really have to even mess with the mic setting. It is just allowing you the options of choosing different mic. And then webcam, unless you have multiple cameras, you're just going to leave it on your built-in camera. And then you hit start recording and you're done. Now you might be saying, what if I want to upload a video? So I created on my cell phone a sample video here and this doesn't, the content really doesn't matter. I just made a really short uh, cell phone video. I literally turn on my um, iPhone, I um, turn, turn on video I recorded and then I used AirDrop. If you have a Mac, you just hit AirDrop. It, uh, syncs to your computer with Bluetooth and it is on your desktop just right there. So I could take that file sample video and I just hit select video file and I find sample video which is right there and by the way this is like the neatest my desktop gets so I don't know if you're impressed or not but uh, definitely my desktop usually has icons everywhere which is kind of like my office right now and I was trying to shield that but I'm noticing I'm getting some clutter showing up so what I would do is I would um, simply hit open and then it will then load you can see it's a very short uh, small file 5.1 megabytes um, here's a question Scott is there a limit to length of video using this tool I found I could only record a video of five minutes with it what do you suggest we use for longer videos okay I wasn't aware of that that's actually good to know so if it is limiting you on that then we're going to use Canvas Studio, which is coming up. So that's actually good to know. Thank you, Mary, for that, because um, I wasn't aware that, that there was a limit. So I would hit save, and then that um, video file, which was off my computer, and it's going to give me the same message as processing, is now available for my use. Now, you might be asking, well, why would I want to upload a video file? Uh, it's a matter of comfort. If you wanted to use your cell phone, uh, there are people like Larry Green in math who go out into the environment and do principles of mathematics and they record, you know, images of trees or running streams or something. Or if, you know, you want to talk about landscape painting and you want to show um, some video that you shot um, in an actual field site or something like that, you could record that on your cell phone and then it's available to upload using this content uploader. The other thing could be pure comfort. You can do a pretty decent video just recording it on your phone. It's not professional quality, but it's it's pretty good. And it's good enough, certainly, for our spring classes here as we're teaching in the uh, pandemic apocalypse of the coronavirus, right? So, I mean, it's, it's going to be good enough for most of our purposes. Um, so, we'll talk a little bit more. Um, HD video files, yes, can get large. So, I don't know. Unfortunately, I didn't. I'll try to prep that for the next workshop. I, d I don't know of what the limitations are in recording media, but I know Canvas Studio, you have a lot of storage space. If you use Zoom as a place to store videos, which we'll talk about that in, in the 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock a.m. workshops tomorrow and tonight, you have um, on the cloud 32 gigabytes. If you're shooting an hour video at 1080, um, 1080H uh, high definition quality, that is going to average around one gigabyte. You get 32 gigabytes on Zoom in the cloud, but you have unlimited space using your hard drive if you have a terabyte or, or, or more. And I've often said if you're going to store videos locally via Zoom, just make sure you have enough space 
when I'm running um, a, a rendering of a of a large hour long music video or something that, that I'm creating in in my video program, I will sometimes suck um, up to a terabyte of all the high quality rendering of each frame of that video. So it, it gets pretty crazy when you're working in high definition. One way to think about it is if you don't want to use HD, if you want to sh shoot at 720p, you're probably going to be okay. Students are not going to be logging on and spraying and saying, oh my God, I'm so offended. You know, you don't have high definition and it's not in 4K. Um, I, I think it's going to be fine. But if you're a perfectionist about that, we could talk about offline some ways around that, particularly once I, I research a little bit more about the limits on the upload media. I was thinking somewhere under settings. Now I'm so curious. Two of you piqued my interest. I just want to see if um, under settings, I thought there was something about capacity. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'm going to figure that out. What is 20,000 megabytes? Is that 20 gigs? Yes. I don't know. Someone can say in chat. 20,000 megabytes. 1,000 megabytes is is a gig. So um, it's it seems like, yeah, you know, about um, 20 gigs you would have. So that is not terrible. Again, if you're doing high definition and each video was an hour, you still could store 20 videos if this is indeed true. It looks like that's your file storage per Canvas uh, shell. So I think you're going to be okay. Again, you could shoot lower definition. You could also just say, I will not um, use long videos because there's a whole conversation as well about whether or not you know your videos should be super long. And I'm the worst offender of that. Believe me, some of you know my Senate president reports can be over an hour and a half long. I, I blush when they say that, but, but it, it happens right to the best of us. So let me show you a few more things here. So if you wanted to, this tool is an insert and edit media. And this one is, I would say, somewhat specialized. So what I could do is I would not even go near advanced. You could do general and you could do embed. So there are really two options there. And let me pull up here my YouTube page somewhere here. And I'll just show you a sample video. And then what this what this would look like. And YouTube is certainly one place you could go if you want to upload videos or get, get the link of a video, upload it, and so forth. Um, so if I just click on my latest upload here, um, I won't play it for you, but just hold that. It's a little dissonant. So um, I can click on the share button. Immediately I have access to that URL. So this is the same as any website. All I have to do is copy that. And I caution you a little bit, if you see some URLs that have a playlist in front of them, I just worry about the stability of that if a playlist gets deleted. So I would always try to find the short version of it. So it just has you with that little dot there between the, the TU and the BE, and then those strings which are your, your file. So I hit copy on that. And then I go back to, um, let's see. Oh, I was on Chrome. Let me go back to Chrome. And then right here, I would just, um, and you could do that with your keyboard. You, of course, know you, you can always use Apple option, command C is copy, and then you could uh, paste in with a V. And then you have it there. And um, I haven't messed with this constraining proportions. I think it's just going to look the right way as far as like being rectangular. And then I hit OK. And then I have it embedded there. And then I would save. Of course, I would want to publish that. And then as the student's interacting with this, you get an immediate then. It's playing immediately, and obviously you can just watch the video. So that's a, that's a pretty easy way. And I, I apologize for that. A lot of my music is, is somewhat dissonant and avant-garde. But uh, uh, let me just delete that. And that, that's kind of the end of that. Now, if you want to do the harder version of this, you'll note under the same insert um, and edit media, there is the embed, and that is an HTML code, and it's actually easy to find. I go back to my YouTube video, and I go to the share button, I click it, and I uh, choose the embed. I'm probably not gonna choose Tumblr or um, you know email or Pinterest. I just ch choose the embed there, and you get that crazy code. Um, yeah, thank you, I'm, I'm glad that someone wants to see my video, so uh, it, it means a lot. So what I can do then is hit copy, I, I'm not sure about the enable privacy enhanced mode, but I will just leave it as default. I hit copy. It takes that um, code, which is establishing the height and the width and the frame, 
and then I click off that, I go back to my Canvas shell, and I do that same trick, right command, Apple, option, whatever, V, and I've got my HTML code, I hit OK, and to me it looks the same. So I, I cannot tell you the difference between the two, it's, it's, it's gonna be the same. So the easier of the two operations is to do the first of those that I mentioned, and to simply use uh, the embed with the URL of, of YouTube. Now, I'm, I'm mentioning this to you for one reason, because I discovered today, I mentioned to Treva, that this normally works. I click on YouTube, and I will type in whatever. I can type in anthropology. I hit my return key, and a thousand results would pop up. I've never seen this happen in all the years I've been using this. So, um, until that ticket gets processed on my end uh, to Canvas, I would recommend that you avoid using the YouTube um, insertion link. It's a little easier for searching, but you accomplish the same thing directly in YouTube. And one other thing I wanna show you, you can even avoid that insert and edit media by simply taking and copying the URL again, and go back to our Canvas page, and all I do is paste and check this out, I hit the return, and boom, it's immediately um, created a link for me. Uh, it doesn't look as good. It's a little smaller. I think this is a little bit clunky here. But when I hit play, it will still play the video and um, the students can, can view the media. So anytime you want to do archival video, insert that in any of your Canvas pages, all you really need to do is to go to the insert media or avoid that and put the URL in directly, hit return. It creates the auto link for you and the students can access it. Maybe right now, let me jump to my menu here. Any of you, I, I know I've gone through a lot, so any of you at this moment have any questions about what I've been showing? Again, I'm kind of getting into a little bit of how you can incorporate some of this um, in, in Canvas. I'll go to Canvas Studio next, which is, I think, one of your best bets for doing screen demos asynchronously. So if you'd like to say something, handy tool to keep in mind, um, press the talk. So just hold down your space bar and all the while you're talking, keep holding that. So just like a walkie-talkie. So anyone, you can unmute yourself. And um, Scott, yes, this is Jim Grant. Hi, Jim. Um, Good to see you again. Uh, putting on uh, JPEG images. Would yep. you just go there? The, um, oh yeah. Good question. Let me show you that. And I kind of just showed me. Yep. Great question. So we'll go back to our content editor. Click on the embed image right there. Okay. Embed image. And you have some choices here. So you can um, take something that has a URL already. And so um, what's a famous, let's just try this out. What's a real famous, um, wh what's a famous image I could just look up and maybe embed just to try? Give me a, a, a title of something. So what I mean is like if I have an image already. Oh, your own image, your own image. Got you. Okay. My own personal images yep. since I'm a photojournalist. Yep. That's already a JPEG file. I can just. Yep. Show that as an example for a sports photo or a news photo or something? Absolutely, yep. So all you would do is um, you would, now I'm looking here, so there are a couple ways to do that. Um, one way is images. This would be your best for local sources. So what I would do is these are my images already in my class, so I've got some word clouds. So I could hit upload a new image. Um, I won't do it. My current screen um, uh, capture is doing TIFF files because I want high quality and those are kind of big. But I would choose my file and then I would simply hit upload or open and then it will um, load that into my uh, class site. And then all I have to do is in any content page, I click that and it will put it right there for me. And then I hit save. So for photography purposes, I would say your best bet is to use the um, images tab right here. You can also search on Flickr. Option two is you can use this embed image tab. And to me, this looks like it will not upload files. So you might want to use two different uh, places depending on if you're uploading or using source images. If you're using source images, um, no, I take that back. They're available. So it's available from here. You upload it and then you load it in. You could also go to Flickr and type a, a word and then any Creative Commons image would come up and then I could immediately insert that and I hit save and it is, I mean, that, that takes not even right like a few seconds. So very easy to accomplish. Um, how about an asynchronous video for non-instructional folks, a video to promote the scholarship application? Yeah, that's actually a great tra transition. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to use new Canvas Studio. So we'll jump to that. Really good question. So uh, yeah, Jim, so I would say this is your icon here and then also here. And that will allow you to work uh, seamlessly with, with images. 
So again, I think if you, uh, you're welcome. If you want to do a recording of media, feel free to use the built-in tool here. It'll save it there. We do maybe have some limitations if we're at about 20 gigs, but that's not too bad if you're going between, um, I think most webcam is probably going to be about 720 and not 1080p. So um, let's then jump to what is called Canvas Studio. So Canvas Studio is a really cool tool that we're piloting via the um, online technology grant. And it's something that I think because of what we're going through here with coronavirus, we maybe will keep into the future because I think the number of users of this will be way um, bigger or way more than what would have been the case before um, all this broke. So I'll show you how to get to Canvas Studio. There are a couple of places, um, two places I can see. One is on your global navigation here on uh, the, um, the menu. So I click on that, it says Studio, or you also see it on your course navigation. So I can click either of those. I hit, hit that, click that, I'm leaving this page, we're not saving it. And this is as easy an interface as I've seen. I mean, it is, um, no one could ever complain that, that this is hard to use. So I only have two options to begin with. And the search is if I'm searching media. So option one, less likely to use, would be adding my own media. So this could be something from YouTube. It could also be something from a file. So I could take my sample video I shot on my phone. I drag it there and it'll upload that. It'll take a second. I'll just cancel it. You get the idea of that. Um, we'll cancel that upload. It, it does take a little bit of time. So if I want to locally store, and I do not, someone's going to ask me um, the limitations. Um, I do not know um, how much Studio will allow you to um, to load, but we, we could talk about that. So maybe don't go crazy because the truth is I don't see the purpose of loading a YouTube video locally into your shell when you can do that already through the tools I, I showed you. Now your own media, that does make sense. Um, here's a good question on photos. Would you recommend recording videos in Photo Booth and uploading them or is it better to do it directly in post like you're showing right now? You know, that's totally a matter of preference. I would say for simplicity's sake, if you're not um, doing high-end video like I'm doing, if you're not uh, concerned about using um, higher-end video cameras like my Blackmagic camera that I use for a lot of my um, recordings, then I would say do it whatever makes the most sense for you. If it's a cell phone video, if it is something that you want to do a little bit of post-production editing on, add a title, that's certainly cool. By the way, um, we won't talk too much about YouTube, but YouTube allows you to do some simple editing of your videos adding some titles and even some effects. So you don't need a full-fledged video program like uh, Final Cut Pro that I use. Um, but it's I, to answer your question, I'd say it's really up to you. So to go back to Canvas Studio, uh, if I get beyond the ad, I'm probably going to use this record. So the record button here will give me either screen capture or web capture. And uh, in some cases, you'll see this message. It's basically saying, uh, there's a little mini program that you have to download on a Mac, and it is uh, next to nothing in, in terms of size. Okay, so now this window comes up. And kind of like with Zoom, if you're doing a Zoom screen share, you'll see a green banner. Does everyone see, um, do you see right now a little checker banner on the screen? Thumbs up if you can see it. You see that? Yes, cool. Okay, so that is your window size. And if you use Camtasia or other video capture, you're familiar with this, you can adjust the size of your screen. Um, you know, if you're particular, it could just be the size of the window that you're trying to show. Then you have this record window. And again, this is very, very, very easy. You could, if you wanted to, go to Preferences. I was looking at this today. Um, there are some preferences here, a pause key. Um, a countdown, do you want a countdown? Again, you don't have to get super fancy. Our students are not expecting us to produce um, high quality Hollywood you know, media for the purposes of an online class. I, I've often said in the videos I've done about making videos and doing audio that people are very forgiving in today's day and age, particularly because you go onto YouTube and all the funny pet videos and stuff, no one is sitting down and doing a sound check, no one is setting up lighting and so forth. Now the purists out there are probably horrified, and I sometimes am as well when I see some of these videos, but it's kind of the culture that we exist in in terms of visual culture. So people are pretty forgiving. Again, if you want to adjust some of these, you can, but I wouldn't even touch it, to be honest with you. So you can choose a screen, a webcam, or both. 
And basically this is, do you just want to capture the screen? Do you just want to capture the webcam like you're all viewing of me right now? Or do you want to do both? If I do both, then when I record this, I will have the webcam, which will be the mini version of me. And this is getting very meta. I don't want to have three of my images on the screen, right? But it, it gets a little confusing because we're already in another program. But for now, let me just choose the screen recording. You can select the size here. So that will allow you to constrain a little bit. Again, I cannot tell you right now what the limitations are on storage of Canvas Studio. I can get back to you on that. But if you're concerned about that, you could go to 720. I would not go to 480. 480 looks, um, you know, like those old Pixel Vision cameras that recorded on cassette tapes that, that became collector's items on eBay. But um, certainly um, 1080 is, is really nice. And I would then simply hit the record button. Again, I can choose between the webcam. I can choose between the screen version. And then I hit the webcam and um, it, which it just popped up there. You see the record button. I hit that and it'll start recording. And there is a countdown. I guess that's a default. And then, okay, so anything I'm doing in this part of the screen is then being captured. And so my example of this is if I wanted to load up a program, I have uh, Logic here. So for those of you teaching, this is an audio you know, production uh, program. So I have a bunch of tracks here. And what I could do in real time with my students to say, okay, let's work through this track. And let's um, you know, go in and we're going to do some um, EQ adjustments on this. We're going to bring out our highs on this. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add uh, a nice uh, reverb on this of some sort, right? So what I'm trying to suggest to you is that those of you teaching, I'm looking at Solange now, those of you teaching anything like that's a technology that involves real-time work on a screen, this would be a great opportunity. Now, the one caveat on this, and let me end this or pause it. Um, I had done on that. The one caveat is what I'm showing you right now. This is all happening asynchronous, right? Because the minute I'm, I'm done with this, I, and I can save this if I want to. I'm not going to save it. Um, sorry, my screen is blocked. There we go. I'll delete it. But the point I'm trying to make is if you're using that um, in Canvas Studio, your limitation is that it's not being done live. But if you're trying to do a tutorial with your students, then this would be an excellent opportunity. So if I wanted to show my students how to um, um, you know, add compression to one of my tracks in, in Logic, I could then do this as a tutorial, save it, and it's done. And some of that work is done for me. If it's very important to you to do that in real time, because other students, they're going to have trouble. They're going to be like, well, I don't know how to add that effect to that audio track. Then that's where you go back. And you really should use Zoom because the real time purpose there is hands on. It's problem solving. When you record a tutorial, you can do Q&A after the fact, but you can't necessarily obviously um, manipulate that in real time. So it's totally up to you. But I would say that this is great for um, creating tutorials or demos or, or, or something of that um, nature. And I think I showed you enough on that. Do you have any... If anyone wants to um, hold to um, speak on your spacebar, any questions maybe about what you might use? Oh, let, real quick, one other feature I totally forgot. So on Zoom, you'll recall I mentioned that there is a tool called Annotation. Um, oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Someone just liked one of my videos. Little um, fringe benefit of doing these workshops. But I mentioned to you on Zoom, you can use the Annotate tool. Well, you can do the same thing in Canvas Studio. This is kind of slick, actually. So you see that pen right there? Before I do the recording, I'm going to hit Start, Draw, and Zoom. And then what's going to happen is, as I'm doing it, um, and I'm, my window is blocked here a little bit, but as I'm doing the recording, let's just hit Record, I can draw on the screen. Um, and so the purpose of that might be, I'm doing that tutorial video. I'm taking my students through. Um, my audio program or whatever, and then I'm drawing on the screen and saying, okay, and this is, now I have too many screens open, but basically I could do that in real time and then have that as a tutorial later for my students to look at. So that's another option for you. Your only limitation, your only limitation in Canvas Studio is it cannot be synchronous. But if you don't want to do synchronous, the nice thing about it is you get it done and that's the end of it. And in our Canvas workshops coming up, we can talk about some options available to you. If you want to do mostly tutorial videos or asynchronous and then set up discussion boards and say, okay, you watch my tutorial on 
doing reverbs in Logic Pro, um, please make some comments about how you're applying this in your own project. And that could work for you. If you're a perfectionist about real time and you need to walk students through, like in a cooking class, if you were doing cooking, it would be a little clunky to me if it was asynchronous because obviously someone makes the wrong move. Baking is an example, very complicated, and they have a wrong step or they don't measure things correctly and their souffle collapses or, or whatever. So you may want to say, I'm not even going to think about asynchronous because for my purposes, I definitely need to show students in real time what things are like. So let me just open it up. Um, ask some questions about Canvas Studio. You can hold... Um, to talk, yes. Scott, um, Solange. Hi. Um, the question is, you showed uh, in Canvas Studio at an image that was 1080i mm -hmm. as opposed to 720. Um, 1080 takes a lot more memory. Yep. With some limitations on Canvas Studio. Um, and that was a thing I don't think I could. Let's just on the fly here. Um, storage. Sorry. Storage limits in Canvas Studio. I don't know if anything will come up. Um, let's see. That's in, in Canvas itself. Um, huh, nothing. Oh, Canvas Studio. Let's see. If I don't find it quickly, we'll just move on. Um, Would you recommend using 720 for image or 1080? You know, I don't know because it's it's not showing me immediately um, what the what the limitations are. So I would say, you know, huh, how can I say going forward? I would say maybe shoot it in 1080, and then we can check for you and communicate back out and say, okay, we discovered. My bet though is if the canvas storage limit itself, which I confirmed is 20 gigs, I would think again you have then um, 20 hours shot at 1080p because it averages about a gig for a one hour 1080p at least um, in, in the files that I create. So that being said, that that's a lot. If you did a one hour lecture for 11 weeks of the class, that would only be 11 gigs. So let's say for now to not get caught up on the storage issue, if we have something that comes up, we can work more globally. I can work with Treva and then we could, we could see if we can increase that. So I would say go for 1080. I don't think you're gonna get a lot of stutter on that. Um, I, it, it's probably get, probably going to be fine, you know, going to 1080. Does that answer it as just for, since uh, I, I can't answer it. 1080p is one hour lecture is a gig? That, that's what it averages for me when I'm, I'm doing files, I've found. Um, Zoom, I noticed, um, was was averaging that much. So that it could vary a little bit, but that's what I'm finding on, on my end doing video. So yeah, let, let's just go with that. And then if, if anything becomes an issue, we can always try to work with our vendor and see if we can increase that. But I think that's gonna be pretty good for, for most people. Um, so again, you know how to access Canvas Studio. Um, I, I mentioned a little bit about cell phone video and cell phone video I would say is, it's your comfort level. Again, you're not gonna produce amazing aesthetic quality video, but it's not bad. You could shoot it and incorporate that as part of your class, particularly if you're walking around. You know, a webcam is not something typically, I guess you could take your, your laptop, but you're not gonna take that around and, and um, shoot something. You're gonna use a higher quality camera, and anytime you do that, um, you know, if I'm using my Black Magic and I'm shooting an hour of video on here, um, it could be up to 100, 100 gigabytes. And so I'm getting into larger file sizes and then I'm having to drag that all into my program and edit it and so forth. So that is like kind of a hassle. Now, another option for equipment is if you do use a cell phone, there are many cheaply available, assuming Amazon doesn't shut down, um, adapters that allow you to take your um, cell phone or any camera and then these run, you know, seven to 10 bucks and stick that on a uh, standard tripod mount on your tripod if you have one. If you don't have a tripod, get a very cheap one. It doesn't have to be a fluid head um, for, for not a lot of money. And that's, that's something that would um, help you with the steadying of your videos if you're going to be doing something using the cell phone outside of, say, your, your office space or something like that. The other thing I want to mention about equipment is for those of you doing demos, and I apologize, my office is in a state of disorder here, but you know, to really think about something that is going to make sense, say, for your workspace. So if you're doing an art demo or something like that, you're gonna to have to think about fitting within the frame here that we're working with, 
that demo space. Um, you could have a portable table, you could have a stand. This is just one of those tray stands. I often use it for you know some of my music equipment, whatever. And um, this then position it in such a way that you know you could actually use it in conjunction with the demo that you're doing. Um, someone just had, a, I think, a question. Someone just have a question there. Do you want to pop in audio? Am I supposed to be seeing you right now? Oh, um, so you can't see me right now? No. Okay. Huh. Can anyone see me? Yeah. Okay. Solange yeah, is saying yes. So I'm not sure. Yeah. That's Scott. Yeah. Everyone else is saying they see Scott. Okay. On the side. Yeah, on the side. You know what you probably need to do is uh, take your little video pane and just scroll to the image of me. That's probably what maybe is going on. There's like a whole... Okay, um, gotcha. okay cool. Yeah. So what I'm just trying to say is that when you think about your um, space, like if you're doing an art demo or whatever, you, you do want to think about what is going to fit in. It's not maybe the most ideal visual situation to try to get everything in the screen. And the other conversation about that I know as we're getting ready for interviews here on Thursday and Friday for our sociology position is to make sure that our spaces uh, look appropriate if we're doing a Zoom. So for me, I'm not going to have all my gear showing. I'm probably going to shift this camera more towards the wall so I can get a nice uh, neutral space. In a lot of class situations, it won't matter. It'll matter if you're doing interviews for candidates. It'll matter for governance meetings and so forth. So, you know, there's some limitations with using a web crammer just in terms of what you can capture. But if you set it up right and do a little bit of practice, you could execute your demo. And then maybe you could do a little tutorial with your students talking about if they're doing a painting project, how to also do that on the screen. And I'm looking at, because Phyllis was, was talking about this on social media today, I'm thinking, Phyllis, uh, save some video of that. I would love to see simultaneous right like 20 images of all these paintings or drawings on a screen i think that would just be absolutely cool and amazing so we may actually discover that we like uh, this online teaching um, more more than, than traditional teaching um, there are some other tools out there and we can talk online so handbrake is something that is a free open source software program that allows you to to convert media Probably will not need that. In most cases, you, you um, it, these programs are pretty um, allowable in terms of what kind of media you can upload. But if you have a strange file format that you need to convert, you can look at Handbrake. Again, personal applications, any real-time video stuff, you probably would use for communicating with your students or maybe having a colleague conversation, but not that effective for a classroom setting. I, I would not even get near using FaceTime for a classroom. You want to use Zoom if you're doing... Um, synchronous kind of stuff. We talked already a little bit about YouTube. Um, as far as video integration, just a comment on that. When you go to a class site, and I'll just show you my class site and, and what I do. Um, I'll just go back to my uh, live class here. So one of the things you can think about is if you're shooting um, asynchronous videos, you could think about how to incorporate those in your modules. So in my case, I have a lot of welcome videos videos that are you know introductions to online classes as you can see I, I do a lot of, of video work and under my modules then what I like to do is I frame individual weeks with videos so when students see week one they're introduced to a series of readings and there could be some videos there and then I also will have typically an introduction video so for week one they'll have this video and it is a, a very short seven to ten minute video that is taking students through all the readings and materials and concepts for that week. So there's a lot you can do on the front end to set your videos up and to incorporate them in your modules. Um, once you record the video in Canvas Studio, how do you upload to your Canvas shell? Maybe to a page or a link within a module. So um, probably won't have time to do that, but I think what is going to happen, I should have I should have tested that, but I think what happens is it, it rests um, in this particular page and then I think you can populate that into pages. Um, I haven't tried that out yet so unfortunately I can't answer that but what I would recommend is when we get offline go to your Canvas shell mess around a little bit with Canvas Studio. You know you're not going to hurt anything if you do a demo video and then see w where you can move that video in terms of using that content. It should be pretty fluid because what you can do currently in modules is any place you add a new module or a content page, as I showed you with that rich content editor, you can then bring in videos, add links, and so forth. So I think what happens is 
it'll actually populate that within uh, your canvas shell. But unfortunately, don't have time to really look at that now. Um, and just kind of closing this out, if you think about the importance of purpose in your class, what do you want to accomplish with the video? Should it be synchronous or asynchronous? Think about that a little bit. And I do have a really long video. I will copy this to the chat. Oops, we just lost that. Hold on. Um, I'll put that in the chat. Uh, you don't have to watch the whole video. It, it's a fairly long video just on it's a video about making videos and I take you through all the technology side of things. I talk about audio. I talk about using recorders and microphones and again um, probably more information than you need for the purposes of putting a, a class together but because my world is heavily uh, connected to audio and video I, I do a lot of that just just for fun and, and projects on the side. So um, we only really have we could take one minute and then I should jump on to the zoom workshop. So any pressing questions you could always leave them in chat or message me privately but any pressing questions in the last yeah. minute here? Yeah. yeah. Just a tear. Mm -hmm. um, a re it's a really simple question. Yeah. If we're doing synchronous uh, video through Zoom, a lot of our people are opting not to have their faces shown. Uh -huh. If I was teaching a class Zoom, I would want to see all my students' faces. Do we have a control? Do we, can we control that? Or, or is that a, because when I logged on, it was an option. Yeah, okay, so um, you really only have one option. Obviously, if you're really anxious, you could, wait, how would we do that? <laughs> I don't know, like, I, I could just do this if I was a student in a class and I could be hiding off screen. Um, the, the only real way of doing that is basically, um, and many of you right now have your video off or your audio off, you're muted, so you can mute your video basically. So um, what you could do, and this is totally up to you as an instructor, is just say, you know, if you're uncomfortable with video, we could just have your video off. You just turn it off or I turn it off. Now, Jeff DeFranco for our big um, all-campus meeting tomorrow has said he really wants all the video because basically then he can see facial expressions and so forth. So that's kind of tricky, but if you're teaching a painting class and you just want the students to, to have their, their canvas right there on the screen, do you really need their faces? Probably not. So it, it's really up to you. You certainly should be the judge of those kinds of issues. I think you want to know that your students are paying attention and engaged yeah. with you. And that, yeah. um, that video link, um, live video link, seems to be kind of an important thing. Um, yeah, I, I would say it is. So if you really want to see student attention and you're doing it as a full-fledged synchronous class, then I would just say, luck you know it's going to be the same just like in a regular class so we're going to use video you could give them assurances and say I will not be saving videos and publishing that or whatever if they're concerned about privacy but I think you have a very good point um, and so unfortunately I should end here I, I do want to jump on if you want to um, get on to the next one again you can get the link in chat I appreciate um, 23 of you jumping in tonight and uh, if you have questions about webcams and shells and everything um, check out my other videos or connect with me um, uh, or my other w workshops and connect with me offline so okay I'm gonna jump to the next workshop um, thank you all for participating it's great to have you and good luck and I'll certainly be in touch so